Okay, there you are. Hi, Rich. Welcome to hey, Media Rock. Hey. Hi, how are you? Fine. So good to see you. First of all, let me compliment to you for the record. It's amazing. You know, oh, pure, thank you. Pure breed, good blood never lie. So I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's a triumph all around, you know. The Robinson, oh, well, thank you. Yeah, you know, the Robinson brothers are back. So uh, we there's a lot to celebrate about. Um, so Happiness Bastards is the perfect record, I guess, into the now in your story. Uh, your essence is there. Uh, but there's also, you know, a strong desire to express it, which makes it, you know, an in-your-face and joyful record, which I appreciate a lot. Um, what other album do you feel, you know, Happiness, Bastards, Genesis and Mood uh, is close to? And do you feel it as a new beginning or it's actually a continuation, you know, like a new phase of being yourself, let's put it like that. I mean, I would say definitely it's a new phase of us being ourselves. Um, and as far as like comparing it to another record, I, I I don't know. That's an interesting question. I mean, you know, there's there's movement on the record, and the, and it and it kind of goes, you know, a song like Bedside Manners, a straight ahead rock song. It's great, wanting and waiting, but then you have she held a wilted rose and then you have things like um you know bleed it dry and and so, it, so and even kindred friend it, it kind of it covers a gamut um which is what i've always liked i like the movement of music you know what i mean yeah. and i like the movement of a record and and a journey uh where that takes you you know and you you sit down and you listen to these songs and they're sequenced in a specific way to take you somewhere. But, and and just the, all the great records, in my opinion, were always that way. You know, Exile on Main Street, you know, um, Physical Graffiti to, you know, I mean, uh, the, Let It Be to, you know, any stellar records that we all grew up on. You know what I mean? Have that, have that journey um, and so, and it's, and overall feeling, you know what I mean? And I mean, to me, it's all about feeling you put on the record. It makes you feel one way, make the next song takes you somewhere else. You go somewhere else. And it's really all about feeling and celebrating that feeling. So it's 10 songs, about 38, 40 minutes straight ahead. Yep. Was it, was it quick, you know, to record it as it seems? And how many songs did you write in total? I had a ton of songs that, um, I mean, I think I sent Chris like 40 songs. Um, and then we just, you know, you kind of throw, it's, you throw everything on a table and you see what fits. <clears throat> it's almost like a jigsaw puzzle. You know, all of these songs, a combination of two songs, which leads to another combination, which leads to another combination. And it kind of builds the record. And it's really interesting how all these songs will almost like a river will go to where it needs to go. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, okay, well, that's where it's headed. And they dictate how the record's going to be. Um, and so, you know, I always write, Chris always writes, we're always spending time, you know, since day one, I've always just written, you know what I mean? It's what I love to do. It's my favorite part of everything is to just write a song. You know what I mean? Um, and so that's, that's what I did, you know what I mean? And that's what Chris did, so. And then to come together and then to, you know, work with someone like Jay Joyce, uh, you know, we decided early on, like, we're going to hand this over to a producer. You know, I've produced all of my solo records and the Magpie records. I've produced other bands. Chris has produced other bands. Um, so we have our own share of experience working in the studio. Um, but it's also cool for us to, step back and say, all right, you know, yeah. let's, let's let someone sort of take the reins on this. 
did it feel like 15 years ago was just yesterday? I mean, was it in a sense naturally complex to get back together? It was natural, yeah. I mean, it always has been. You know what I mean? Um, that's one. That's the one area that Chris <laughs> that Chris and I never never really had issue with. You know what I mean? Like, no matter how obnoxious or fighting we would be in the past, we would always get together and be able to write songs because we, you know, that always usurped the other bullshit. You know what I mean? Like, this is business and. Well, it's not that it's business, but this is this is serious because we're writing songs, and and so that to me is what what where we always have been. So to to you know to start writing songs. I mean, I started writing in during the pandemic. You know, for the record, just because we had someone you know someone dumps a year and a half on your lap. You know what I mean? You got to take okay. advantage of it. And so I was like, well, you know, this is what I'm going to do. And so I just started writing and writing. And um, so it was it was cool. And and that's when we really started working on this record, you know, just and not really um, with any concrete plans, just like, oh, well, let's just write some songs because we have this time. And then it was, you know, and then it's just it was all natural and it flowed really well. But since you started separately, at which point uh, I mean, you you actually felt it was you know the the right moment to come back together and actually work on the record. Uh, well, I mean, you know, look, we we wrote a ton of songs and we, but then we had we had Shake Your Money Maker the tour, um, and we wanted, and that was really what brought us. That's what started us, and it's what brought us back um, to be able to go out and just play these songs that were was the springboard for where we went as musicians in our lives you know what i mean yeah. so that was our focal point in that sense so we would um you know we still went on tour i was still writing songs we would mess around at sound check we would do stuff but that was a world tour you know we went all over the world you know america europe south america japan australia and so we just kind of went <clears throat> went everywhere. And then this was the right time. You know what I mean? And so we just decided, okay, well, now we have this block of time. We have these songs. Let's go in and do this, you know? Which was the first song that you worked together? And was it tough, actually, to pick the first single, you know, to present properly this comeback album? Um. The first song I sent him was Wanting and Waiting. Um, or the first two were Wanting and Waiting and Dirty Cold Sun. And so those were the first two that, that kind of started the whole record. Um, but there was talk, I mean, as far as a single goes, I mean, there was talk about Wanting and Waiting was, was the one that everyone really agreed on. But there were a lot of people that were like, what about this and what about that? And what you know, so, I mean, but it's always that way when you are, are ready to release a record. You know what I mean? Like people have their favorites and, you know, so it's kind of cool. It's always, it's fun. It's a fun part of the process. And are you involved in writing lyrics as much as Chris? Uh, I mean, as much also as melodies and arrangements, which are actually your main part. Um, I wrote all the lyrics on my solo stuff and and on a lot of the magpie stuff but you know chris writes lyrics in this band um and so our roles are more defined in this band i mean i deal with music and and like you said you know some melodies and, and arrangements but but chris and i really work on the arrangements together and uh we you know and so that it, it kind of makes it a little bit more fluid that way you know what i mean like yeah. i focus on this stuff i send it to him he works on his half and then that's how we do it the black rose is a band with a very strong identity always been like that um at what point in the process does the new musicians you know came into the picture of the record i mean how they served 
you know, this new chapter of this great story in terms of sound and creativity, were they involved? You know, assuming, of course, that, you know, this is something that not anyone can do since you have, as I said, a very strong identity. It's funny how some bands I've produced have never recorded a song as a band. Mm. Um, they will go in and the drummer will play the verse over and over and over again. And then the the, uh, the producer will like take the best verse and then cops cut and paste it and create a bed. Everything's gridded out. Everything is perfect. You know, they try to what they think is perfect, which is so antithetical to humanity. You know what I mean? Like the <clears throat> the the sort of organic nature of music anyway has to live and breathe. It has to speed up a little bit. It has to slow down. People don't sing in perfect pitch. People sing a little flatter, a little sharp. And the, and the ear is designed to hear that. It always sounds weird when it, everything's shiny, clean, and perfect. And so for us, we just go in and we record. This, this record was recorded as a band. Everyone was in the room together. Everyone was playing together. A couple of overdubs here or there, but the whole basic of the track is the band. You know what I mean? Did the other guys have a say, you know, on their parts or uh, it was actually shaped already when you entered the studio? Um, you know, everyone's, you know, everyone. Um, yeah, I mean, I get I mean, I, I guess a little bit of both, you know what I mean? Like if uh, if something if someone plays something cool, then the Chris or I or the producer be like, yeah, man, that's great. If something's like, oh, no, let's try this. I mean, there's st there still has to be um, a way to execute the creator's vision. Yeah. You know, you're not going to play jazz over like a heavy metal song, or you're not. Gonna, you know what I mean? Like, there's not going to be like a, a a DJ breakdown in the middle of one of our songs. But you know, so. But yeah, I mean, pretty much everyone comes, hears the song, plays parts. This is cool. That's cool. There's a lot of suggestions and talking. What if you played this instrument? Let's try this. Let's do this. And so it's definitely a collaborative thing. But, you know, Chris and I still have the final say. You know, a band is a family in itself. Um, do you think that... Um blood bonds help the chemistry also for the other guys the fact you that you're brothers you know, so you you actually you know speak the same language you have the same dna that helps the chemistry also within the other guys i mean i guess it depends on how toxic the brother's relationship is i mean sometimes i'm sure it can be really difficult you know what i mean uh but you know, Chris and I getting along and, and trying to do this in the right way, which is when we decided to get back, we decided to do this the right way. We don't want to just do this for a couple of years, take some cash and go away. We wanted it. To, we wanted this to be right. Um, and so, you know, we're we're concentrating on our relationship as brothers first, you know, and then whereas we used to put everything else before that. Um, so, you know, I think when it's working well and Chris and I have a clear vision of what we want and we have a great producer like we did in Jay, I think that's a really cool thing and it helps everyone. So the choice of Jay was targeted. I mean, you you yeah. specifically <clears throat> chose him. We, we talked to a bunch of people and Chris and I really liked him, his, his work and his just his vibe as a person, you know? And we're like, oh, and both of us were like, this is the guy instantly without, you know, we were both in agreement of that. Right before this record, um, you <clears throat> recorded a Covers EP, 1972. Um, yeah. Was it uh, a sort of test, you know, a pressure relief, you know, to approach them the new record? Of, no, it was just know, something new fun. material. <laughs> no, it was literally just something fun for us to do. I mean, I, you know, Chris and I are were have always been massive music fans, and 
And when the opportunity and the idea came up, we're like, yeah, that'd be, that'd be cool. I mean, it was literally just that, you know what I mean? We don't really plan much, you know, we don't really like think about like, oh, this could be great. And, you know, we're just like, yeah, let's just try it. You know, if it sounds fun, we'll do it. And about planning, are you guys, um, both brothers involved in the, you know, deluxe editions of, you know, Donoff, Shake Your Money Maker and Southern Harmony? Did you have a say on those? And did of you course. Actually... Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there yeah, more we work, coming? We worked long <laughs> on it. I mean, we worked long on it So and hard. So, And, and the cool thing was there was so much stuff, you know, Shake Your Money Maker, we were kids it was our first record i was 19 there wasn't a lot of b-sides but we found some really cool stuff in the vaults that some that i had totally forgotten and then southern harmony there was so much more stuff there and it was really cool to to build that box set and you know who knows if something else will come down the pipe i don't know maybe a box of unreleased tracks will be you know such a pearl because i'm sure yeah. that you have plenty yeah there's a bunch of stuff so maybe you never know okay and about silver arrow records um does having your own independent label make you feel more relaxed today or does it give you know some trouble and headaches since you know such you're such a huge band all around the world <clears throat> so there's a lot of stuff to deal with with um it doesn't give us headaches it may give some of the people around us headaches but ultimately um you know the record industry has been turned upside down and it's or turned on its head and it's a different place now and we just like having the the, the freedom and ability to be able to release our own records on our own terms you know Whereas if we were signed with a big label, they own everything, they have, so you know what I mean? There's like more, it's it's just, it's less conducive to being free to do what we want. Do you have a favorite guitar to use in the studio? You know, the first one you always take, you know, on impulse, let's say. I mean, it's forever changing, but it also, I mean, every guitar sounds different and every guitar feels different. And so it really depends on the song and what the song <clears throat> kind of asks for, you know? So typically I'll go for a, one of my 335s or a Tele, a Fender Telecaster, but those are the ones that I would mainly go towards, but I don't have like one specific that I go to. Did you change, uh, I mean, did you realize that you changed some way during you know the 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 hiatus uh of the band you know getting back together felt a little bit different or really it was just you know 15 years ago and i always pictured you as the wiser brother <laughs> <laughs> did um, you make that call you know and say stop it it's about the music so let's get back together no i mean look i, I of like going off on our own on my own and chris going off on his own you know you you like i said i was 19 when i made shake your money maker yeah. and we split up the first time when i was like 33 or something 32 so you know i had 12 solid years of like touring plus the years before that record came out of being in this one thing and and being really insular and you're in a submarine, which they call the bus, they, you know, they call your bus a submarine or whatever. So you're just kind of in this really insular place. And I'd never really branched out and played with anyone else. And so when the band first split up, I, I made a solo record and, and I put together a band and it didn't pan out. And then I, I, so I turned it into a solo record and went out and toured a little bit and I learned a ton. Then we got back together and then I made three more solo albums and made, and then started Magpie, did that whole thing um, and played with Bad Company. And then, which was interesting for six weeks, but you know, I was filling in because Mick, Mick Rouse was ill. Um, and then I did this Hendrix thing and, and, and the whole time, like writing and producing for other people and doing stuff. So 
I mean, all of those things add to added to my perspective of the world and it added to how I, I deal in the studio and it added to how I deal with other people and it added to how I write songs and how I play to sort of get out of that crow's thing. And, and I, and I could say the same thing about Chris. I mean, I think he is, you know, his um, path that he took, took him where, you know, where he directed it to go. But it was really, at the end of the day, I spent my whole life writing songs for him to sing on because that's where I came from. And even writing songs for like John Hogg, the guy that was singing for my old, for Magpie, yeah. it just, it was still like, I, subconsciously I was like, oh, this is, I'd love to hear Chris on this. You know what I mean? Just, you know, because also I'm a, still a fan of what he does on top of all the other stuff. And he's a fan of what I do. And so that coupled with, you know, um, family asking like, who's that guy? You know what I mean? Oh, that's your uncle. You know what I mean? Like we have kids, we don't spend time with each other. You know what I mean? Like we weren't spending time with each other and all of these things combined. And ultimately that's kind of what brought it back. It was just more of like, a, again, family first that we're, the family brought us back together, the family element of it. Yesterday, it was announced that you're back to Milan as well during your tour on May 27th. Uh, this time yep. it's in a theater, you know, it's called Teatro Arcimboldi, which is a place with a phenomenal acoustics, you know. Um, right. How will the next tour be structured uh, musically? I mean, you know, will you have a fixed set list or no, as, we're gonna know, as for it. tradition, you will have different <laughs> yeah. set lists every night. We're going to have dis different set lists. I mean, we we really did the, the Shake Your Money Maker set list because that's what we set out to do. But ultimately, we do love to change and grow. And so we're going to play a good portion of the new record. We're going to play some older songs, some deeper cat catalog songs and maybe some covers and some and some hits you know so we're gonna kind of play a lot of it okay so this means that the new guys ha will have to learn a bunch of old songs as well of course yes of course how many <laughs> uh i don't know that's a good question <laughs> okay so i mean there's you... about 100 maybe 150 songs 100, 150 songs i guess but who compiles the set list usually? I mean, um, you know, do you follow like a vibe, you know, <laughs> along the way? How do you pick the songs every night? Well, for the past two or three years, it was it was Shake Your Money Maker and then yeah, another 10 songs. But for us, we just see what we feel like we want to play. I mean, maybe there's a slight template of like, OK, here's four songs that we're going to play every night and we work around it or change it. But I don't know, I mean, sometimes we would just start from scratch every night and just throw in different songs. So I don't know how it's gonna be yet because we're, you know, we haven't really started, so. Okay. And where are you headed now? Are you back for good? I mean, is happiness, Bustards, like true, a true new beginning of, you know, a long story? I, I mean, I hope so. One never knows, you know, in this world. But yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is this is what we're doing. This is how we feel, you know. Which is your next goal, you know, the next milestone on this amazing journey? <laughs> I don't know. I don't really have. I mean, we're going to put the record out and then we're going to go on tour and, and we're going to see how that is. The old way. <laughs> yes, exactly. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Rich, for your time right. for this interview. See you in Milan. Oh, see you then. Thank you. Ciao. Thank you very Bye. much. Ciao, ciao.